Hi, nobodies. So it has been, you know, it's really been a good week in Cleveland. <laughs> you know, I mean, um, I've had my ups and downs, but as far as weather goes, it's been awesome because apparently it's never this warm. So I guess, I guess Clevelanders are probably like, this ain't awesome. It's fucking hot, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, Hey, I can deal with this. Um, yesterday was not really great. I'm going to say that. Um, I did walk like seven miles <laughs> and I almost took my first Uber ride. Um, yeah, I almost did, but yeah, I walked to the post office and you know, I got about, it doesn't seem that far. Like you say, Oh, seven miles. What's seven fucking miles? You know, it's, it's a small number, you know, I used to walk at the park, you know, and two miles was easy. And one of the really nice things about where I'm at is there's not a lot of hills. Like in Arkansas, where, where I'm from, like central, um, good luck going seven miles of flat land. <laughs> You're going to have some hills. But, um, uh, I, I did make it all the way and and like part of the way there I saw a hawk I videotaped a hawk like he landed in the ditch and I'm like okay turn 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 on the camera turn on the camera you know and I was listening to music and I was like turn on the camera turn on the camera and it was taking so long and then he then he starts to fly away and I'm like no I still don't have a shot of this bird because I mean like there's just a road a two-lane road between me and this big ass fucking bird and he just flew to a post with, um, like some scrub brush in his, in his talons. I was going to say claws, but they're talons. <laughs> I, I don't think he was a red tail. I don't know. But anyway, I finally get the camera to working and I'm like, you know, I'm not going to videotape him for very long, but that clump of grass he got, he either got like the juiciest, fattest worms I've ever ever fucking seen or he got like um some mouse babies i mean because because he was he was steady on eating something pink he, he got something and i don't think that they do um roadkill or anything like that i i would think you know it was like a mouse nest so i was like wow and I actually got so hot walking. Like, I think I was about two miles in when I tied my jacket around me. And then on the way to the post office, there was like construction and stuff. And I found a frog. And so I pick up this frog because I love that kind of shit. And I mean, he's barely moving. And I, I don't know. I don't know much about frogs. I just know I like them. So I was holding on to him and I was thinking, you know, should I keep him? You know, maybe I should keep him. I could have him as a pet. I mean, not that frogs are really like, I don't like them that much normally, you know? And I was like, no, if I keep him, he's, you know, I probably won't keep him right. You know, he's, he's a wild frog. This isn't the type of frog that could be a pet. I don't think. And I was also thinking, you know, did they dig up like, like did the frog like burrow in because I know like uh skinks and stuff will do that they'll like or, or salamanders will like burrow into the ground to be ready for winter you know and I was like did they dig up his home and and so I was really worried I mean not not like worried worried but I was like do I keep him you know because because I mean if you know have I saved him just so he's gonna freeze to death you know I don't like that idea of of him freezing to death because I saved him I picked him up off the road I do the same thing with worms. If there's a worm going across sidewalk in the sun, I pick the worm up and I put it in the shade somewhere. So I'm holding this frog and occasionally petting it, which is not as fun as it sounds. But, you know, I'm like, hey, little guy, you know, just kind of like petting it. And he's not moving a whole lot, which kind of leads me to believe that he was kind of in hibernation mode or maybe he got hurt. I don't know. So I get to this, I get to the, the thought of, well, you know, I don't know. 
and I mean, yes, I could carry this frog to the store and get myself a container to put the frog in. And, and if it needs to be set free, set it free. Um, but I was like, well, I've still got like, I think at that point I had like another mile to go and he's in my hand. So like, fuck it, you know? So I walked off the main road and started walking down a street looking for a place to put this frog that would be outside of the construction zone. And I found like a, a standing tree with like hollowed, it was like hollowed out. And so I put the frog in this like mossy, you know, like there was like dirt inside this tree, like some like really sifty dirt. So I put the frog in there and he kind of jumped around a little and I said, okay, that's my good deed for the day. You know, it's just a frog, but it's kind of like, uh, look up the story of the starfish. You know, they're like, you can't save all of them. And you know, what does it matter? Why, why do you, why would you do that? And it's like, because it matters to that one. You know, you can't save everything. You can't do everything. But if, if you can help one person, I mean, if everybody set out and like helped one person or did something nice, just one nice thing per day. If you do nothing else, do one nice thing. You know, I mean, the world would be a better place if everybody was like doing one kindness per day, you know, pay it forward or, or reverse, you know. So I got to the post office and I lost my keys when I was walking. I was like, oh, that's so funny. That is so funny universe ha 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 you know because I'm like where the fuck did I lose the keys <laughs> you know like did I lose them when I tied because I was sitting there thinking where did I tie the coat on you know and see I wouldn't have heard the keys drop because I had mirror phones in so I wouldn't have heard them drop you know and I mean there's really no telling because there were times like there was a certain point where like I had two vapes on me in case one of them lost a charge and I had one in my back pocket because it, it had been in the pocket of my coat. But as I was walking, it was swinging and it was pretty damn heavy. So I was like, okay, I'll put it in my back pocket. Well, after a while, the denim on my back pocket started rubbing my butt. And like, I'm weird about um, slight touches, like slight things, you know, like if, if somebody's like, like I could get a massage but if somebody's just lightly caressing me, that drives me fucking nuts. <laughs> you know, they get like one or two passes and then it's like, stop. <laughs> well, that's what was happening with the, uh, the vape that was in my, va my back pocket. Like I kept trying to move it and then it would just fall back into place and it'd start just rubbing like on my ass cheek. And I'm like, stop it. So I ended up switching it off with my lighter one. And then the lighter one didn't, was doing the same thing in the back pocket. So I put it in the pocket. Anyway, there was a lot of stuff I did. And, you know, picking up the frog. You know, I might have lost them whenever I was reaching into my pocket to, to tape the, the bird. You know, I don't know where the fuck I lost the keys. Um, but I was like, great. Thankfully, at the post office, you show them your ID, they'll let you into your P.O. box. I was like, because I was like, please don't tell me I walked seven miles and I can't even get my fucking mail. So then I went into uh, Mark's and I was like hungry and, and I was going to get an Uber. But as I was thinking about, I don't have my fucking keys. I was like, you know what? I need to walk back. And if I find my keys, I'll catch an Uber from wherever I'm going. Cause, but, but see, like in the walk, like. Two miles in, I knew that there was no walking back. Like, I knew that, you know, it's kind of like that. Uh, I can't remember which movie it was, but... Oh! Mm, was it? Gattaca? Anyway, the these two guys were out swimming to see, to show who was better, you know? And they were like, well, how did you how did you beat me? And he says, well, I didn't plan on making it back. 
you know, or something like that. You know, he was like, I'm, I gave it everything. I wasn't planning on coming back. Um, so like two miles in, I was like, okay, I'm gonna make it to the fucking post office, but I am not walking all the way back because like I said, seven miles doesn't seem like much, but when you're walking it, it's a pain in the ass. And then you're having to like dodge traffic and, and oh my God, when I crossed the bridge over the freeway, I had like this weird vertigo thing or well, yeah, it was weird. Um, like I'm scared of heights. Now I'd already passed that, you know, like when I was coming up on the bridge, I was like, it'd be so easy to just doink, you know, just right off the side. I have thought of various ways to die since I was locked up, since I put myself in the psych ward over seven years ago. I, I see things and I'm like, yeah, that would do it. You know, it, it's just automatic. It's not that I would ever think of killing myself. It's just, I think about it. So I'm like, yeah, it'd be so easy just doink. But it seems like every bridge over the freeways in Ohio has fencing on it. Like, okay. So apparently enough people have jumped off of bridges or done stuff. You know, but I was like, I could scale that fence. You know, when I got to it, I was like, I was like, yeah, I could climb that fence if I wanted to. Not that I ever would. Because like I say, you know, I mean, I, once you've seen a suicide and you've dealt with the funeral, the wake, and all of the people who feel guilty, who shouldn't feel guilty. You know, I mean, the person who kills themselves, they're not doing it to make people feel bad. But what they leave behind is a bunch of people going, could I save them? You know, I mean, there's a lot of questions and a lot of guilt and blame that people throw on each other. The pain that that you leave behind is so much worse than the pain that makes you want to end your life. So I would never do it. Um, I just wouldn't. You know, if I ever die and they say, oh, an accidental suicide, you know, that... I might do because I might, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm pretty good about not mixing things and not taking things I'm not supposed to take, but you never know. Somebody might spike something or, or whatever. Cause like, I do know I'm, I'm allergic to certain things that might spike things. This is why I don't drink though. I mean, one of the reasons I don't drink is because of spike, you know, like stuff that might get put into your drink and plus I'm a lightweight and it's not worth getting sick over <laughs> I'll get sick for the most part or do something stupid so I just steer away from it but so on the ride home I got really upset and and spent a good portion of the rest of my day crying it was not fun at all. So I took a nap. When I woke up, I felt really, really torn down. And I burned myself. Um, not the best idea, but it was weird that the burn felt so like like you know when I normally don't talk about this kind of thing but um when I was younger I used to burn myself um not not a whole lot you know I wanted smiley faces and and you know like if I accidentally burned myself I was actually kind of like I wasn't real quick to pull my hand away if I accidentally burnt like most people they'll burn they'll go ow me, I'd sit there and just kind of hold it there for a minute. You know, I was always, like, trying to, like, see, you know, test my, you know, like, like even with when I take a bath, the water's really hot because I like to test how hot I can stand it. Um, so I took a lighter and decided to do a smiley face. And I've got two of them now. Um, the first one... I did like three times because 
oddly enough, like when you first put it to the skin, it, it hurts. Like you, you really instinctively like want to pull it away. I'm like, no, just grit your teeth and bear it, you know? And I felt good for a minute. I mean, this is typical BPD uh, logic. I'm, I'm not a cutter. Cutting myself has never done. I don't like, I don't like paper cuts. You know, I mean, I'm like, no, I am not. I mean, I will cut myself. Don't get me wrong. Like, like when I had um, a cyst up here, you know, I'm not messed up. But, but I didn't cut. I more like poked a hole with a blade. Um, I would not do that to somebody else. I am only a danger to myself. And I pay for that. But I, I was so low yesterday that I like burned myself a few times. And I'm having to fight the urge to do that today. So today what I did, I, I decided, well, you know, I did seven miles yesterday. And things were kind of decided for me that I was going to go swimming. Indoor swimming. So I went and um, they were having a water aerobics class. So I was like, eh. I'll do that. So I did that. I got home. And I've had to take two two baths because fuck if I kept smelling chlorine after the first one. I'm like, why do I keep smelling chlorine? I don't know what I forgot to wash. <laughs> but it was it was just bugging me because I'd occasionally get that whiff of chlorine and I hate it. I hate smelling things. And um and for the rest of the day, you know, I've just been working on um, organizing my music on Google Play because I had uh, ripped a bunch of my CDs and uploaded them onto my playlist. And when I do that, everything has to be sorted into genre and, and um, decades and into other playlists, you know, like it might be my soul or sad or happy or dance you know like I have to sort these things and that's one of my things it does, it's not something that I get OCD about like I can handle it if it's just in there as like track in it doesn't bother me it doesn't bother me that it like it doesn't have a picture on it sometimes occasionally if I'm really bored I will do like the copy and paste thing and make sure that everything gets a picture. I'm weird. I'm always weird. But you know, last night I had a good conversation with another person that's got, that got, that is typed as an INFJ. And, you know, we were, it's, it's nice to talk to somebody who you don't have to explain, you know, I'm like, I can say, Hey, you know, do you, d is this, does this happen to you? And when they say, yeah, I thought I was only, you know, I thought that was a thing just to me. So it's kind of nice. And, um, you know, it was really neat to, to bounce ideas off of him as to what I need to do next, you know, and, when I move, because, because there is an, another move in my future, when I move, I don't know if I'm going to stay like in Cleveland or if I want to go down to Galveston. Um, I'm having to do research on cost and all that kind of thing. Cause, cause I mean, Galveston, you know, Cleveland, I got Lake Erie. And there's a lot of like decent places I can rent that are near Lake Erie. And I like that idea. Um, but Galveston is like, there's the fucking ocean, you know, I could, and it's Texas. I fucking love Texas. You know, at first I thought Houston, but then I was like, you know, that's, that's, that's really a long way from central Arkansas. If if I wanted my, if I wanted to see my kids, you know, expecting them to drive to Houston would be like expecting them to drive to Cleveland, you know? So, I mean, it's like, 
if I, if I want to do Texas, I need to do closer. And Galveston's like eight hours from Little Rock. So if I move to Texas, it's going to be Galveston. And I mean, that's not to say that whenever I go, like, if I say, hey, you know, I'm going to stay in Cleveland, you know, at a certain point, I do plan on going to Galveston. I mean, that will be in my future that, you know, when certain things happen, I will definitely be going to Texas, you know, and, and I think that Galveston is probably going to be right up my alley. Um, cause I mean, I liked Houston because then I was like Corpus Christi, you know, cause I fucking love Corpus Christi. I didn't get to see Galveston whenever I went to Corpus Christi, but, um, we had chosen Corpus Christi to, to go to because I was like, well, hey, if we're going to drive all the way to Galveston, why don't we just hit Corpus Christi? Because I always wanted to go there. When, when I was a kid, I was like, when I thought about going to the ocean, Corpus Christi, okay, I'm going to say it. I was in love with the drummer of Slaughter and he was from Corpus Christi. So I said, I want to go to Corpus Christi. It stuck. So that's where I ended up going. And I really, you know, I love big bodies of water. I love water in general. So anyway, that was yesterday and today. And things are not fantastic, but, you know, I'm not freaking out. I am not in, you know, I'm not miserable. You know, I'm like, hey, you know, I can, I can roll with this because, Anything that I'm dealing with right now is nothing compared to what I was feeling before I left Arkansas. You know, it's like, I'm happy. Even, even when I'm sad, it's like, hey, that's just one aspect of my life that I'm sad about. Everything else, I mean, my gut is still like, hey, we're supposed to be here. This is... This is the path. Stay on it. Hold your course. Wait. Ride this out. Because there's something coming. And I'm, I'm going to listen to it. You know, and, and if by the time it comes time for me to move, if I'm saying, well, hey, you know, I don't feel like this is, you know, like if I start really seeing signs to go somewhere else, then I'm going to go somewhere else. That's just how it is. Um. I'm going to follow my gut, you know, and, and talking to my INFJ friend really helped. I was kind of feeling like, why did I listen to my gut? Why am I trusting in the universe? Why am I letting the higher power lead me, you know, or, or whatever else people around me want to say? I was like losing faith in that. And my INFJ, my INFJ friend restored my faith. You know, he's like, hey, think about it, you know, and, and, and we had a conversation about it. And I was like, okay, he's like, hey, just, just ride this out. And I said, all right, I'll ride it out. I've rode out worse. So that's my life. I am going to have a lovely night. I'm going to watch some Paradise PD on Netflix. It shows fucking hilarious. And I've got dinner in the oven. I don't see tonight being a bad night. There's just no way. And I'm not going to let it. I'm not going to let people bring me down. I'm not going to let things bring me down. I am alive. I am healthy. I am happy. What more could I ask for? You know, um, tomorrow's going to be a good day too. Even if bad things happen, it's not a bad life, you know, and, and I'm happy. I will get through and I will come out stronger than ever. Yeah, my lip bitch. <laughs> so, anyway, have a good night. Bye, y'all.